Today, we break down some of the big questions and storylines for the St. Louis Cardinals in the second half of the season. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffron, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X, at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I do want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Of course, we're on YouTube as well. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and interact with us, and hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your rivals. Check out Booking.com for your stay today. So Mother Nature was not a friend of the Cardinals or the Braves or us <laughs> on Friday. The uh, scheduled first game after the All-Star break gets washed out due to rain. Perhaps it was a blessing in disguise because it was reported that the team's lone all-star and Ryan Helsley, Matt Carpenter, as well as coaches Daniel Descalso, Willie McGee, uh, were all having travel issues in getting to Atlanta leading up to the game. So I'm not sure if it was like a weather thing. I don't know if it had to do with the the blackout cyber issues that were going on on Friday. But uh, either way, doesn't matter. Nobody played baseball anyway. So as far as I know, everybody's in Atlanta now which sets up a doubleheader for today, weather permitting, because they're expecting more rain in Atlanta today. But uh, from what I've been seeing this morning, it looks like they're probably going to get at least get one of the games in, which, uh, which will be nice. So this also switches up the rotation a little bit. Sonny Gray was supposed to start on Friday. So Kyle Gibson's going to go in game one today. Sonny Gray will be in game two. Then you got Michaelis on Sunday for game three. What are some of the things that we're concerned about? All right, now that we got all that riffraff out of the way, what are some of the things that we're concerned about with the St. Louis Cardinals? You know, what should we be keeping an eye on as as we as we venture into the second half of the MLB season for the Cardinals? Well, uh, the first thing that you know, obviously, we've we've been paying a lot of attention to here at Locked On Cardinals is what's going to happen at the trade deadline. You know, everybody wants to speculate; everybody's got their ideas. I've given you dozens of targets from right-handed hitting bats to starting pitchers to bullpen arms. Uh, we've got another one that we're going to talk about a, a little bit later in this episode. Uh, but I've given you these different ideas and different trade targets. I guess we can go that way, which on paper all sound like solid additions for this team. Easier said than done to try to get these guys all in a Cardinals uniform. A couple of questions need to be answered that can affect the decision-making at this point of the season in what the Cardinals are going to do at the deadline with the clock ticking here. How good does the front office think the people that they have already actually are? And we know that our front office in St. Louis tends to think a little bit more highly of the, the people that they have than outsiders do right? How much do they believe Tommy Edmond is going to help them if and when he comes back at a, yet another setback uh, with his ankle bothering him again? Is Jordan Walker going to make an impact at the major league level this year at all? Didn't do much at the beginning of the year. He's been sent down ever since. Is something going to click? Is he going to become a piece of this puzzle? What is their level of faith in guys like Andre Pallante, Miles Michaelis, Lance Lynn? Is Steven Matz coming back? And if he does, is he going to be any good? <laughs> Bullpen wise, how much uh, you know has the wear and tear of what happened in the first half, a, a tough first half that had so many tight games for this team? How did that affect guys like Andrew Kittredge and JoJo Romero? You saw them pitch much less effectively as the first half continued. Can they be the guys that we saw in April and May and parts of June after getting this time off at the All-Star break? Will they come back fresh? Do they have any anything left? How much do they believe in guys like Matthew Libertor? 
Ryan Fernandez, John Keane moving forward. Will they trust them more in high leverage situations? That way, JoJo and Kit aren't used as much. You still want to use them, but to, to, to when anytime you're winning, to only be able to go to them, not great. You know, you want to be able to split things up a little bit. That way, that way they're not getting as taxed. You know, a lot of these questions I'm I'm proposing right now, we don't know. We really don't know. And if I knew how they felt <laughs> towards a few of these things, I could give you a more accurate idea on who and what they will be targeting at the trade deadline. Now, in a perfect world, they would just address all of their needs, the three weak spots that we have pointed out. And they could be able to get the guys that they can realistically realistically go after, right? I mean, there's always these ideas that, oh my gosh, go get Garrett Crochet. Why wouldn't you? Of course, if you could, you would, right? But realistically, is that going to happen? No, probably not. Um, but can the guys that they are probably going to be in the market for, will they be enough to impact this team to push them into that next level where when the playoffs do roll around and let's say that they make it, that they can compete with teams like the Brewers and the Phillies and the Braves and the Dodgers in the National League. Here's what Bernie Miklas says on the matter. President of Baseball Operations, John Mozeliak and his Raj can't ease up. The players are watching. The fans are watching. Everyone who cares about Cardinals baseball is wondering, what will Mozeliak do to augment his roster between now and July 30th? The front office made enough offseason moves to raise the Cardinals into contention but must finish the job. Last season's horrible collapse dulled ticket sales. The Cardinals have energized the fan base with a 614 winning percentage since Mother's Day and a more positive vibe to circulating a Bush Stadium, but it will be a long winter without a drop in business if the franchise fails to make the playoffs for the second straight year. I think I misread that. With a drop in business uh, if the franchise fails to make the playoffs for a second straight year. If management sits out the deadline or makes a minor move or two just for show, the inaction will give credence to a familiar criticism. The Cardinals aren't fully committed to winning. The St. Louis offense is terrible versus left-handed hitting, ranking 28th in the majors in slugging and 29th in batting average. On-base percentage and OPS, what should be the top priority for this team? Opinions vary. But keep in mind what Mosellock told Ken Rosenthal of The Athletic earlier this month. The big thing for the Cardinals is, will we score enough runs? Getting Newt Barr and Edmund back could change that calculus. We'll see. Katie Wu from The Athletic also talks about this particular um, subject where you know we're trying to figure out what they might do at the deadline. She says, recent history suggests St. Louis will again be conservative. This deadline, leaving Mosellock responsible for nailing impactful moves with minimal risk, which is much easier said than done. Now, expecting the Cardinals to, to make a big splash at the trade deadline, it's probably not the best thing to place your money on. It, it's not really what they do. When they go and get guys that are, are big name guys, normally it's an off season trade, normally. And I'm just kind of warning you that you and you're not going to like it. But to prepare yourself to watch the big teams fight over the much larger names and contracts first, then after that happens, you see what trickles down and what that effect is for the remaining players that were made available. And that's where I think Mo can strike and make a deal. And maybe he gets somebody better than you thought he could get. He's been pretty creative at the trade deadline when the Cardinals have uh, added people over the last couple of years. Last year, obviously, selling, but before that. And those moves have worked out for the most part. And they weren't huge names. John Lester, Jay Happ, Jordan Montgomery, Jose Quintana. Like, out of those four people is the, the biggest name before Jordan Montgomery was so good was probably Jose Quintana, right? Lester was at the end of his rope. Hap was at the end. Yet these moves worked out. So I would expect something similar. And I, I don't think Mo's just going to sit on his hands. I don't. I think he'll get something done. But some of the names that we've brought up that are available might be out of his reach.
Another major question in the second half of the season has to do with the Cardinals' two highest paid players. We'll tackle that subject next on Locked on Cardinals. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. With summer travel heating up, especially travel for baseball games, it's time to explore those U.S. cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about. And yes, we're talking about the rival cities. We're talking about the other cities in the NL Central. Milwaukee, Chicago, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. With hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay even in your baseball rival city. Booking.com has so many choices across the United States for your summer travel this MLB season, which we've still got a long way to go. 66 games, folks. Still a lot of baseball to be played. And let's not forget about all your Little League tournaments that uh, your young ones are still playing in this summer, which will take them usually through August. Different cities all over the Midwest this summer. Booking.com can help you there as well. The right state can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. Book today on Booking.com, on the site, or in the Booking.com app. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 5 million members. Price Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play the daily fantasy sports that you know and love and crave. Unlike other apps, Price Picks has it where it's just you against the numbers. So all you got to do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and then watch your winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Price Picks with as little as for a correct pick. So why not turn 10 bucks into $1,000 when you can, right? That makes a lot of sense. I'm in on that one. That, that's good. Uh, if you're looking for promotions, of course, Price Picks has got you covered every single week from lowering select players' stats projections on Tuesday to help your lineup hit or by getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Friday. Price Picks is also now available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Download the Price Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's code Locked On MLB on Price Picks for a deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Price Picks. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Then make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel, and it's programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. It's now streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, it's no secret that one of the big problems for this Cardinals offense this year has been the lack of production from the two guys that the team was counting on to be their big thumpers in the middle of their lineup. Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado. Heck, they haven't had their three <laughs> best bats, who I thought were going to be their best bats, coming into the season doing much. When you mix in that Wilson Contreras got hurt and the uh, broken arm knocked him out for so long, you've hardly seen him. When he has played, Contreras has hit very well, but we haven't gotten a, a much of him this year yet. So... Not many teams, and this is where I want to kind of give props to what the Cardinals have done, not many teams could sustain losing Contreras plus have Goldie and Nato in the midst of their worst seasons in their possibly future Hall of Fame-worthy careers. But somehow, some way, they've been able to pull it together and have been able to stay afloat thanks to you know, breakout seasons by guys like Alec Burleson and Mason Wynn. The steadiness of Brendan Donovan has been huge. And as streaky as Nolan Gorman has been, and I know it drives all of us nuts, where for like a week, it looks like nobody can get him out. He's smashing balls for 50. And then for two and a half weeks, he can't put the ball in play. He just strikes out over and over. But Gorman right now at, at the midway point is 17 home runs and 47 RBIs. That's production. You wish he could sustain it, you know, and spread it out a little bit, but it is production nonetheless. So, will either Goldie or Nato be able to turn it around in the second half? That's a major, major question for this team. Uh, here's what Bernie Miklas says specifically on Paul Goldschmidt. Once again, you can uh, catch this article on uh, scoopswithdannymack.com. If Goldie continues making a large volume of outs, an obvious, an obvious weakness, that has flattened his on-base percentage and lowered his power, manager Ali Marmo will have to do what's best for the team. No, I don't think he'll bench Goldschmidt 
but the Cardinals have no obligation to put Goldie in the prime lineup spots. In 369 plate appearances, batting second, third, or fourth in the lineup, Goldschmidt has a 219 batting average, 281 OBP, and a 361 slugging. Based on WRC+, Plus, Goldie is 17% below league average offensively when slotted at the 2-3-4 slots. This is something that fans have been barking about. I've been barking about. Like, if they're not hitting, move them down. Move them down. Let people come up. You've noticed lately that guys like Brendan Donovan are starting to hit in the meat of the order a little bit more, uh, which is what you need to do. Like, let the best hitters have a chance in the biggest situations, hitting behind Burleson and Mason Wynn, the guys who are getting on base. You know, Goldie and his 8 million strikeouts are not helping us. He's hurting us. Uh, Bernie points this out, saying this debilitates the offense. It hurts the team. Goldie has had... Much more success, but in only 35 plate appearances when batting fifth in the lineup. A decrease in playing time should not be dismissed. Alec Burleson plays a decent first base, and using him there would give Marmel the flexibility to do more with the DH spot. Of course, Goldie can put all of this to rest by binging offensively when he comes out of the All-Star break. Now, my everydayers know that I've been on the Burley to first base bandwagon, having him doing that full-time next year for quite a bit now. I've been pushing that, saying, I know it's not going to happen this year. He's just not going to move Goldie aside because he feels like he owes it to Paul Goldschmidt to, to not do that. But next year, Goldie may not be around. And, and this isn't personal. It's just business. A normal Paul Goldschmidt would be a tremendous boost to this team for the remainder of the year. But I hope that Mo has been watching the decline over not just this year, but last year too. Two seasons worth of going in the wrong direction. And I hope he's been watching closely and doesn't do something foolish this offseason by extending Goldie with a contract for a large chunk of his payroll just because Goldie's a nice guy. We know he's a nice guy. Nobody wants him to fail. But you got to do what's best for the, for the team and the franchise. And bringing Paul Goldschmidt back as of this day is not what's best for this fan franchise. Katie Wu chimes in on the subject, saying if the Cardinals want to be a true postseason threat, Arnato and Goldschmidt posting bounce back second halves would do wonders. The team needs a return of their power from its esteemed duo. Goldschmidt's first half OPS of 664 is nearly 230 points below his career average. Arenado's 381 slugging is a far cry from his career 519 mark. Goldschmidt's 28% strikeout rate is the highest of his career by a lot, by the way. Arenado was on pace to register as few as home runs over a full season. He hit just eight in the first 96 games. It's been a brutal season for the franchise faces, and both have acknowledged this. How they fare opening the second half will correlate to Mosellock's trade deadline plans. Wilson Contreras can't supply the power from the heart of the order alone, and there's no counting on when Tommy Edmond will return or what he will look like given the inconsistencies many players face returning from wrist surgery. The Cardinals pledged roughly $50 million combined to Goldschmidt and Arenado this year for his reason. They need production from the heart of the order. Amen, sister. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better. You know, some teams, there are some teams out there with massive payrolls that can absorb players with high salaries not performing quite up to par. They do exist. I mean, look what Nick Castellanos has done with the Phillies. Nothing compared to what he was doing with the Cincinnati Reds before he went to Philly. But they can handle that because they've got other guys around them and they've got a monster payroll and they don't have to worry about it. The Cardinals are not one of those teams. You've got not only the money they're paying Goldie and Arenado, but also the large sums going to Miles Michaelis. $17.7 million this year and next. Steven Matz is making $12.5 million this year and next. And you're not getting your money's worth from any of these guys. That's almost $80 million of your payroll on those four dudes. And they're getting you a combined war of three right now. Combined, all together, three. Just to put that into perspective, former Cardinal outfielder Marcelo Zuna, by himself here in 2024, has a war of 3.2. He's beating all four of them combined. That is not money well spent. 
So hopefully they don't make any more mistakes with older guys moving forward and keep extending them extra years and stuff. I, I, I hope it doesn't happen. Uh, we're going to wrap things up next with another trade idea that I, I spotted that I, that I hadn't really seen before. All right, this was a new one. This was a fresh one involving an American League West team. We'll talk about it next on Locked on Cardinals. Order supplies from the website that's made for the skilled trades. Find thousands of parts from hundreds of brands in just a couple clicks at SupplyHouse.com. SupplyHouse.com gives you 24-7 access to a huge selection of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies with fast delivery anywhere in the U.S. If you need help with an order, get industry-leading after-sales service from the friendly and knowledgeable customer support team and talk to a real person every time. I know you're like me. You don't like having to press all the buttons trying to figure out where you're supposed to go, who you're supposed to talk to. I just want a human on the other side of the line. Just get me to a person. Like how many times do you just hammer the phone? Zero, zero. Take me to an operator. And there's great news for plumbers, technicians, and contractors. Being a pro has got its perks. Trade industry professionals can join their free Trade Master program for free shipping and serious discounts on every order. Over a thousand pros already. Trust. I, I shouldn't even say over that. Over a hundred thousand. Over a hundred thousand pros already trust the Trade Master program to deliver results. Apply for your membership today and get a competitive edge on every order at supplyhouse.com slash TM. Save money and time when you order online. Order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from supplyhouse.com. Real people, real service. I love sports. I love them so much. I, I hope they never stop. I mean, not having baseball the last few days, been kind of miserable. <laughs> been kind of miserable. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I got to do is open up the app and then just dream up that's Anytime I'm in the mood, it doesn't matter what sport they're going to have you covered on it. Uh, summer league stuff has been going on in the NBA. Uh, WNBA all-star break is happening right now. There's plenty of things for you to bet on there. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. Hopefully we get some Cardinal baseball today and you can bet on what's going to happen in this double header. You can do it at FanDuel.com. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the Free Fire TV's channels app. You can find Locked On Sports today, now available on the Free Fire TV channels app. Trade speculation continues with less than two weeks to go before the trade deadline, and You've seen a lot of the familiar names that are out there from the same teams, right? We've gone over them a lot. If you're an everydayer, you're very familiar with people that are available on the White Sox, on the Marlins, on the Angels, the Nationals, the Oakland A's. I'm waiting for some teams to, to, to kind of fall off a little bit so we can get some fresh players to talk about. Because right now, not a huge pool of players that are available. Almost everybody in the league is trying to get players and add them to their rosters as opposed to trading them away. But I saw a trade idea from our friend Thomas Govain over at RedbirdRants.com that I hadn't seen before, and I, I wanted to bring it up to you guys. So I was like, huh, thinking a little bit outside the box here, are we, Thomas? So check it out. He talks about Chad Jennings of The Athletic dubbing both the Mariners and the Cardinals as buyers in this article. And he points out that Jennings wrote that Seattle needs an offensive boost. And he identified a pitching prospect the organization could part with to fill that need. That pitcher is 25-year-old right-hander Emerson Hancock. Now, here's what Thomas says about Hancock. What he lacks in stuff, he more than makes up for in command. His walk rate across the minors has never exceeded 9.2%. And he has limited home runs at an extraordinary rate. He's limited home runs at an extraordinary rate. He features a four-pitch mix with a sinker, four-seam fastball, changeup, and slider. His fastball has lost some zip on it over the years, but his slider has become much more effective since he reverted back to his three-quarter arm slot. Injuries were the story of Hancock's early minor league career, and this year he's performed shy of his projections. In nine starts at the major league level, Hancock has a 4.76 ERA, 
5.41 FIP, and he's only struck out 5.6 batters per nine innings. Doesn't sound all that great, does it? But at AAA, he has fared better with a 2.49 ERA, 4.49 FIP, and a 7.06 Ks per nine rate. He has ranked as highly as 82nd overall, according to MLB Pipeline, among all prospects back in 2022. The trade he proposes, and this is where we might get some guys shaking their heads like, oh boy. The trade he proposes is Emerson Hancock to the Cardinals for minor league infielder Thomas Ajaysi. And this is what he says about it. The Cardinals will receive a pitcher who can slot into the bottom of their rotation here immediately. And the Mariners will snag a middle infielder with ample versatility. Third base and second base are where Seattle needs the most help. And Thomas Ajaysi has logged plenty of innings at both spots. Now, if you haven't seen the numbers for Sajaci, who again was the Texas League MVP last year at double A, not even remotely close to the same. He's hitting like 249. He's got like 11 home runs. Like they're not horrible by any means, but it's not what you saw last year where he hit over 300 and was on pace for almost 30 home runs. Like he just had a monster year last year. Regression was probably going to happen, but. Uh, still somebody that, you know, showed some um, showed some stuff to us fans uh, in spring training this year. People were big fans. Some people wanted him on the roster this year because they weren't sure uh, what they felt about Mason Wynn. Obviously, Mason Wynn has worked out. Uh, the Cardinals have drafted J.J. Weatherholt in the first round this year. He's a shortstop, but most people project him to be a second baseman when he makes it to the major leagues. Guys like Sejaci, Cesar Prieto, who's having a very good year at Memphis, Jose Vermeen, who you've seen up on the Major League roster a couple times. Uh, any of these middle infielders become a bit more expendable now because of J.J. Weatherholt, a guy that some people predicted would be the number one overall pick. He slides to the Cardinals at number seven because of the hamstring injuries, but it's still like had a heck of a year at West Virginia and the previous year, an ungodly year in his uh, sophomore season. So the hit tools are there. Defensively, he's very good as well. If he continues the path that he's on, J.J. Weatherholt, I mean, he's already a better prospect than J.C. and Prieto and Fermi. He already is. But he's got to prove it, obviously, at the pro level and with wooden bats and stuff. So we'll see what happens. But... Um, these guys that we thought, okay, maybe these are the, the future infielders of this team. They become a little more expendable. So you can chase down other needs like starting pitching and bullpen arms this year. So uh, a trade like this isn't out of the question by any means. Is the JC for Hancock something that'll probably happen? I doubt it. I doubt it. But you could see names like Prieto and the JC and some of these other guys get moved for needs for the team now because of how they drafted and uh, by, by snagging Weatherholt in the first round. So just keep that in mind when you start seeing trade rumors out there. But I'm curious what your thoughts are on just this particular trade as well. Just to JC for Hancock, something you would do. And remember, don't overvalue your prospects. <laughs> remember that. Is Hancock something to, that you're – willing to take a flyer on who hasn't had the success at the major league level that many people predicted that he would, but he's still 25 and has been pretty good at triple a. Maybe there's something they can figure out. Maybe spending some time with Sonny gray would do him some good. I don't know, but I want to hear your thoughts on it. Would you pull the trigger on this particular trade? Let me know. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter, X at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like, subscribe on YouTube and help our channel and love for the Cardinals continue to grow. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason, and I will see you next time on Locked on Cardinals. How about, how about we sweep this doubleheader today? Wouldn't that be nice?